I, I wanted to know, um, does all that is want us to worship and praise? Give us more to your question. Uh, does it bring him pleasure? Is it something we're supposed to do? Give us more. Um, does all that is want us to... Worship and praise. Worship and praise... Praise him. Or no, that's man's distortion. Okay. All that is, is joy. And all that is does not deviate from that just because you do. And all that is adores your joining in that vibration. Does he hear us when we pray then? Well, when we say, ask and it is always given, mm -hmm. in what other way could that be interpreted? Okay. It isn't a matter of whether you're being heard. It's a matter of whether you're lining up with what you're asking for. In other words, people often think that their prayers aren't being answered because they don't have evidence of the results. And then it is logical that they would say, well, since I'm not getting results, then the one I'm asking must not be answering. And we say, there's another factor that you're leaving out. That answer is coming, but you've got to line up with your answer. You can't be so bogged down in the question that you can't hear the answer. You can't be beating the drum so much of what's missing in your life and at the same time be a vibrational match to what you want to be there. So this source or this God, whatever label you want to give, this infinite intelligence that is liquid love, that is pure positive energy, that is always responsive to what you're asking for, never withholds anything from anyone. But there's a difference in the way one prays. You can pray from fear, which means you're not letting in what you're asking for, or you can pray from a place of hope, which means you're letting a little more of it in, or you can pray from a place of believing, which is letting even more of it in, or you can pray from a place of knowing, which means it is even now. And that's why prayers of appreciation are the most powerful prayers, because th when you pray for something that you're already appreciating, you activate the vibration that lets all the good stuff in. And when you pray from your fear, your words are futile, but it's not because you're not being heard and it's not because you're not being answered. It's because you're holding yourself vibrationally apart from your own answer. Okay. So would, would that be the same thing as the appreciation as praying from a, a position of worship and praise? Well, anytime any of you or us offer words, the words mean different things to different people. And so that's why we were wanting to get a vibrational basis. But yes, we can see how someone could be in a place of belief and trust and faith in well-being. That's why there are so many people in religious settings whose experience helps them to identify something that they want. They pray for it from their place of needing it or wanting it with a place of expecting the prayer to be answered. And there is alignment in that that is effective. Absolutely. Okay. Um, times in the past when I have felt I had faith and no doubt uh, and really believed that something was, was going to manifest, I actually felt like it, I manifested the opposite. Why? You cannot be a vibrational match to one thing and get the opposite. So it must be a misreading of your own vibration. And that usually happens because... When someone misreads their own vibration, it is that they have just not made an often enough association between what they're feeling and what they're thinking and what they're getting. In other words, when you know something is going to be and something other than that bees, then you must be crossways of your own signal. That's why when we say there are three steps, ask, step one, answer, which is source energy answering is step two, and being in the receiving mode is step three. And so when you're asking from a place of really expecting to receive and it doesn't happen, then it's really worth noticing the correlation between what you were thinking and feeling and what you were getting. Someone said to us, I was driving down the freeway and I was listening to music which I really like. And I was in what I consider to be a very happy mood and I was pulled over by a policeman and given a ticket. How could that be? Because what I believed I was feeling and what happened to me seemed to be opposite. But as we visited a little bit, we ask, 
what they were doing while they were driving, and they talked about listening to the music and driving, and then they talked about having seen a policeman go by, and then they talked about having recognized that they weren't buckled up, and then they talked about their irritation about the law that says they have to buckle up, okay. and then they talked about how it is really a restriction of freedom that somebody else gets to define whether they buckle up or not. And as they spoke for a few minutes, everyone in the room could feel that there was a very clear vibration rumbling beneath there, that something in that happy moment had activated something that they'd practiced the drum of longer. And the dominant vibration was the most active vibration in the moment. And the manifestation always responds to the most active, most dominant vibration, you see, always. So... Sometimes people say, well, I felt this way and I got this. And we say, you might have felt this way that much while you felt this way that much, you see. And so with, through trial and error, you're able to show yourself how you really feel. And through trial and error, you're able to move up the emotional scale. Through trial and error, you come to realize that it doesn't matter what you've lived or what anybody lives or what anybody thinks. The only thing that matters is how you consistently feel. Then, before you know it, you've got a handle on what you're feeling. Esther said to Jerry the other day as they were driving, it was a beautiful day, the most beautiful drive they've ever had from Boston down here. Wide open roads, new roads in many places, bright blue skies, turning leaves. Their motor coach is uh, supreme. It's soaring along. They're feeling wonderful. And Esther said, I've got this funny feeling sort of st stuck in my craw. She could not figure out what it was. And... It wasn't anything about the day. She started doing what most people do. She tried to figure out what she'd been eating that could have made her feel that way. In other words, it has to be something other than my vibration. It couldn't be that she watched the presidential debate. <laughs> it couldn't be that through part of the drive she was trying to give the candidate of her choice better words to use. <laughs> In other words, uh, percolating around there in her vibrational background was something that she's been chewing on, and it was stuck in her craw because she's powerless. And we said to her, once she identified that that's what it is, when you let something that you can't control be the basis of the way you feel, you're in trouble every single time. 